This is going to be an important coding exercise, and it isn't going to be a lot of code, but it's something that I personally use on a pretty regular basis. So you can see down here that the describe block says that we need to convert a string formatted date such as this. So imagine getting a date like this and then turning it into a date object. So right here, this is the data we're going to work with, which is 07-31-2018. And then the expectation is that after we pass it into our method, that if we call class on it, it's no longer going to be a string it is going to be able to have all the cool date methods such as month and leap question mark to say if it's a leap year or not and every other date method that is out there. Now part of the reason why this is so important is because when you combine other frameworks. So imagine that you are building out a Rails application and you want to be able to take dates in either from an API or even from a jQuery calendar component. So if you wanted to do something like that, then and then you want to go put it in the database or run queries on it, having a string date really is not going to work for you. It's going to become very difficult to perform queries on and it gets very buggy. So what you can do is you can leverage the date library. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say require date and then from there we're going to build a date parser method and you can see the name of the method is down there if you want the test to pass then you want to put it with the same name and we're simply going to pass in a date as an argument and then from here we call the date module and pass in the string p time so this is a very helpful method inside of the date library. So if you've never really used a date library, don't worry that you've never seen this method. But what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to pass in a date. And then the second argument is any type of format that we want to use. So for this one, and I definitely recommend for you to look up the documentation if you want to learn exactly what each one of these characters mean. But I'm going to go percent %m, percent %d, slash percent capital Y. So what is this doing exactly? Well, the string per time method gives this type of parsing kind of syntax. So what you can do is you're going to have all of these little percent and then letter items. And what these do is they're going to represent whatever these values are. So what we need to do if we're in order to use string p time is to be able to send in a date and then tell Ruby what format that date is in. So in other words, if I were to change the state format or if I were working with an API that sent in a different format, then I would have to change what this is. This is nothing besides giving a direct mapping between the date that we want to use. So what this parser is going to do is it's going to take in that string date and then it's going to say okay I'm looking for two characters and that's going to represent the month then I'm looking for a slash then I'm looking for two characters and that's going to represent the date then I'm looking for a slash and then I'm looking for four characters notice the capital Y here this re represents a four year date if you wanted only two years such as just slash 18 then I believe it'd be a lowercase y so now let's go and verify that this is actually working I'm going to copy this and if I come down here, I'm just going to use the same string date. So I should be able to say date parser, pass in the date. And this should return a date object to me. And oh, looks like we have a little issue. Oh, it's because I passed in string date instead of date. So running this now, this should now work, and there you go. So we no longer have just a string anymore. We now are working with a real date object. And if I, let's say that I call this just date object and store the value in a string, now this date object can do anything that a regular Ruby date could do. So if I check for the leap year, 
and run this, then it's going to give me false. But if I changed the year, off the top of my head, I believe that 2004 was a leap year. So if I change the year and run it again, now it's showing that it's true. So this is where it becomes such a powerful tool. And if you haven't done a lot of Rails development or run into these types of date time bugs, then you really may not appreciate it until you get into those. But I have had several applications where I was working with time zones and dates and I was getting values in via strings in very specific formats and it became very difficult to work with an application and to perform database queries and that is where being able to work with date specific objects is so powerful because I can now leverage that and I can grab the month, the day, the leap year or not leap year I can do and then I can also do date math and that's a huge thing. Imagine that you had a form where the user was able to hit a date and type a date in like this and he said I want you to create a set of schedules so like a calendar application I want you to create a you know set of appointments from today every week for the next five years if you were to try to do that manually that would take a very long time but with Ruby date objects you'd be able to do something like this and then simply perform mathematics on it maybe I'll do another exercise just on how you could implement that so you can see the power that it provides but that is how you can take in a string date pass it into a method and then use a Ruby date object